Welcome back to Bowl Game Radio with Bruce Binkowski and Mark Neville on San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Bowl Game Radio, everybody. And Bowl Game Radio is brought to you in part by San Diego County Credit Union. It's not big bank banking, it's better. And MJE Marketing, creative, connected, and always curious. Visit MJEMarketing.com. And you are? I'm Mark Neville. And I'm Bruce Binkowski, reminding you this is Bowl Game Radio, and we're talking about San Diego's bowl games. The San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl, Thursday, December the 26th. For ticket information, poinsettiabowl.com, or call 619-285-5061. And the National University Holiday Bowl, Monday night, December the 30th, Pac-12, Big 12. Visit holidaybowl.com for ticket information, or call 619-283-5808. Now, this segment, we are going to talk a little bit of Pac-12 football, but before we do that, we have a couple calls. Uh, First, we'd like to uh, welcome Jason from Temecula. You're on with Bruce and Mark on Bowl Game Radio. Hi, guys. How's it going? It's going great, Jason. Excellent. Hey, I wanted to know, this is for each of you. Bruce, you go first. What is your opinion? What is the best holiday bowl game in history? Well, I've been a part of every one of them since 1978, and uh, I know you always remember, when you're older, you remember older things, but i got to tell you, the 1980 Holiday Bowl, BYU was trailing uh, SMU, 45 to 25 with 3 minutes and 58 seconds remaining and BYU came back and won at 46 45. So that's my personal favorite. Well, I, I started with the bowl games in 1991, so I'm going to go to 2001. It was a seesaw battle between Texas and Washington, and uh, Mac Brown coaching the, the Longhorns. Uh, Rick Neuheisel was coaching the Washington Huskies. 27 points were scored by Texas in the fourth quarter. Major Applewhite led an amazing comeback, a uh, real seesaw effort. But 2001 Holiday Bowl is my favorite of all time. We got one more call also. We want to hear from Wayne in San Diego. Wayne, welcome to Bowl Game Radio with Bruce Binkowski and Mark Neville. Well, hello. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, I'm very enthused to hear about this final uh, setup with the uh, National College Bowl playoffs and, you know, to determine the real national champion. Uh, for one thing, for a lot of years now, I have been sort of aggravated with the Heisman Trophy and all the awards and stuff in that it goes only in uh, the season and not the bowl games. And what I'm hoping to see happen is with this new national bowl game playoff picture that all the bowl games that would have like San Diego champions or champions, these would be players from the bowl games themselves. Some might be duplicates of the Heisman Trophy, but I think it would be a lot, add a lot more flavor, color, and beauty uh, to the whole proposition. Hey, Wayne, thanks for uh, that information. You know what? We, we will consider anything. We'll look at anything to make our bowl games bigger and better. And uh, we encourage fans to call in with ideas just, just like Wayne's. Well, let's get on to our next segment. Let's talk a little bit of Pac-12 football. And joining us is a Pac-12 reporter uh, for ESPN.com, uh, Kevin Gemmel. Kevin, good evening. Guys, how are we doing? Hey, by the way, we're running, we're running late. We're sounding great, but we're running a little late, so we may have to cut you short just a little bit. But thanks for being with us, and let's talk very quickly some Pac-12 football. Well, let's be honest. All we need to talk about is Oregon then, right? Uh, no, 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 no. Come on. Come on. Come on. So, <laughs> so, Kevin, the Pac-12 is strong. I mean, they are really strong this year. Are you surprised at how well they've been playing? Not at all. I mean, when you, when you look at the depth of this conference from top to bottom, <clears throat> particularly their non-conference schedule, the way they started out, uh, some marquee games, uh, Washington, Boise State, uh, you know, Tennessee, Oregon. There were some uh, Nebraska, UCLA, Wisconsin, Arizona State. There were just some great marquee games, non-conference games. And the Pac-12 has gone 29 and five so far, and it's non-conference slate. That's a really impressive number. And when you look at from top to bottom, it is a good, good league. There are great coaches. Uh, there's some rebuilding going on in places like Cal and Colorado. But even Colorado has already got two wins. It's, it's doubled its win total from last year. Yeah. Some growing pains at Cal still. They've got an entirely new system, new coaching staff, a very young team, and they've been hammered with injuries. They've lost 11 of 12 starters on defense. But uh, overall, the middle of the pack has gotten a lot better, and that's made – uh, you know, Washington State, a more competitive team. It's made Utah a more competitive team. Arizona, they're not going to be down for long with Rich Rodriguez running the show. So it is a tough league. And when you factor in, they play a nine-game conference schedule. 
that makes it even tougher. With us is Kevin Gemmel. He reports Pac-12 football on ESPN.com. Kevin, we were talking earlier with uh, Ted Tolner and about Fresno State, the possibility of them going to the BCS if they go undefeated. Uh, does the Pac-12, even with now Stanford with a loss and possibly UCLA or Oregon could have a loss, how many teams out of the Pac-12 do you see going to the BCS, even possibly with one loss? Right now, I think two is a really safe bet. I think Oregon has a fantastic chance at running the table. If they get into the national championship game, obviously that opens up the Rose Bowl uh, for either a Stanford or a UCLA or you know, whoever. So I think two is a really safe bet right now. Uh, we're going to see, a, we're going to learn a lot about UCLA in the next two weeks. They go on the road to Stanford this week, then they're on the road again at Oregon. So we're really going to find out what UCLA is made of. If they can get one win out of those two games, I think that will be a huge milestone for them. If they can sweep it, they've got to be considered a top five team from that point on. And if they go 0-2, they still will probably stay in the top 20 because you, you look at the way the voters treated Washington in the last two weeks. Washington came to Stanford ranked 15th. They lost to Stanford. Then they lost to Oregon. They've only dropped five spots. So I think the rest of the country still recognizes that you know, the top of the Pac-12 is really, really tough. So if UCLA loses both of those games, I wouldn't be shocked if they're still a top 20 team. One team that I think is really intriguing is Utah. After that huge win over Stanford at home uh, last weekend, they're four and two for net right now. Are they for real? Do you think they have a shot? Well, that's the question. What are they going to do with it? I was actually in Salt Lake City for that game, and I had a good conversation with Kyle Whittingham afterwards. We were sitting in his office, and you know, we talked about again how deep the conference is. It's one thing to win a significant game. This was sort of a signature Pac-12 moment for Utah. Now what are they going to do with it? What's next? Can you go on the road? Can you win at Arizona? Can you win at USC? Can you beat Oregon? Arizona State's coming to Salt Lake City later, this, uh, later in the season. Arizona State whooped Utah last year. So it's nice that they have this one win, but what can they do to build off of it? And it's not like when they're in the Mountain West when their entire season seemed to come down to a TCU game. And if you win that, then everything's dandy, you know? You've got to take the 24-hour rule into effect, enjoy the victory for what it was worth, move on to the next one. Whether they're for real, I think so, because you look at what uh, the infusion of Dennis Erickson has done to that team. Uh, It's just been phenomenal, the change that they've seen on offense. We're speaking with Kevin Gimmel. He is the Pac-12 reporter for ESPN.com. And, Kevin, I don't want to put you on the spot, but this is Bowl Game Radio, and we're promoting the San Diego County Credit Union. It doesn't get any more difficult than Bowl Game Radio. And the National University Holiday Bowl. So since you're the Pac-12 guy, could you tell us, make Mark and my job a lot easier, who will represent the Pac-12 in the National University Holiday Bowl on December the 30th? I think you got a good shot at a Washington or a UCLA, one of those second-tier Pac-12 teams who are so close to breaking through that upper tier, but it's so top-heavy with Stanford and Oregon. Uh, so I, I, would, I would think that a Washington or a UCLA will be very much in that mix. One, another school that I, I think is, is really turned around, they were the doormat of the Pac, Pac-12 for, for several years, Washington State. They have the new coach now, and Mike Leach seems to have turned things around a little bit there in, in Pullman. Do you think he can have success up there? I think so, and I think we're seeing it this year. I mean, you look at their season opener, they go to Auburn, uh, and they only lose 31-24, to and that's a game that a lot of people thought they probably should have won. They play that on a neutral site, then you know, I think Washington State wins that game. Uh, they had the big win against USC, obviously. Uh, they got some pretty good by Stanford, but then they beat Cal in that air raid, bear raid thing. They collapsed in the fourth quarter last week against Oregon State, but you can see that there's improvement. As Mike Leach gets his guys and his type of players and he gets them acclimated to the way he plays football and he coaches football, I think, yeah, we're, we're going to see them bowl eligible. I don't know if they can get there this year. They got Oregon this week, uh, so it's going to come down to you know either Arizona State, Arizona, Utah, or Washington. They've got to win two of those games because they've already played seven, uh, so they've only got five left to find two. And it's going to be tough for them this year. All of those games are going to be extremely challenging. So I don't know if they get in there this year, but we're definitely seeing the progress from Washington State. Kevin, I'm going to ask you a question probably nobody cares about but me. But <laughs> being an old-timer, I've been around a long time, 
And it's what's different now as a writer. It used to be a writer would have so many inches that he would have to write, or he or she would have to write for a newspaper, either for a morning or afternoon, and you'd have specific deadlines. When you're working for ESPN.com, what kind of deadlines do you have? Isn't it 724? Well, I can tell you that this is my third radio deal today. I've done three radios, a podcast, I've shot a Skype interview, and somewhere in between I found time to write. So <laughs> None of the interviews have been this solid, though, right? No. Oh, by far the best one. Hey, what, the and best by the class. way, you can follow Kevin at ESPN underscore Pac-12 blog. Is that right? That's absolutely right. Uh, you know, it, it's a different animal now than it was back when I was at the Union Tribune and I'd come home with newsprint on my fingers. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a different era now, and, and people want their information fast. They want it in different ways. Uh, it can't just be sitting down in front of a computer and writing anymore. It's got to be you know, video. It's got to be interactive. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've, I've been having fun with Stanford. Uh, Shane Scove, their linebacker, every couple of weeks, he's jumping on Skype with me and doing sort of a video diary throughout the course of the season. So you've got to find new and creative ways to, to get information out to people because people want it. They don't just want to sit down and read what what you have to say anymore. They want to hear you say it, and they want to hear what other people say responding to it. Boy, it is all different than it used to be, that's for sure. I, yep. uh, Kevin, I want to ask you about one more school, Oregon sure. State. Yep. So they got Cal coming up. They should have. Uh, they should get a win there, but then they finish with just a brutal schedule. They got Stanford, USC, Arizona State, Washington, and Oregon. Do you think that they could get enough wins to, to get a, uh, an invitation to play in the National University Holiday Bowl? That's going to be tough. And here's what I've been saying all along about Oregon State. We figured by the time they get to Stanford, they're either going to be 6-1 and one or 7-0. and oh. We just didn't expect that one loss to be Eastern Washington. <laughs> that was a real shocker. And I think it put a real stain on Oregon State early in the season. And it just killed their momentum. Now, give them a ton of credit and give Coach Riley a ton of credit. They lost to an FCS team a couple years ago, and it just completely ruined their season. I believe they were 3-9 in 2011. But what they've been able to do is not let it kill their season. They go and they won in Utah, which we're learning is a tougher and tougher place to play. You know, two weeks ago, UCLA barely squeaked out of there with a win. They had a, a miraculous win against San Diego State. But they've really picked it up the last couple of weeks with the, the big win over Colorado, the big win over Washington State. I would expect them to beat Cal this week. Going down the stretch, we're really going to learn what this team is made of. As you said, they've got Stanford, they close with Oregon, they've got Washington in between, so the real meat of their schedule is backloaded. So I'm, I expected them to be about where they are right now, but we're going to really learn what they're all about in these next few weeks. Kevin Gemmel, ESPN.com, Pac-12 reporter, thanks for joining us tonight. And we'll be talking to you as we move forward towards Selection Sunday over the next few weeks and keep talking Pac-12 football. Thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Great catching up with you guys. All right. Thanks, Kevin. And you can follow Kevin Gemmel on Twitter at ESPN underscore Pac-12 blog. Whatever that means. And you're listening to Bowl Game Radio on the San Diego Bowl Game Media Network.